right, sorry about that. I got cut off by a phone call. The phone doesn't work properly. Even though I turned the ringer off, it seems to always let a call or two in. Anyway. All right, the breakings. Just like we've been talking about in every possible way. Here's where we're going to make our connection to the millstone. Right there. This Leviathan heart is as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of nether millstone. The millstone, that's the second cup. Revelation chapter 21, 22. Nether means underworld. And then describing his heart, what New York City has a place called Heart Island, which just so happens to line itself up with Golgotha, which means city of the dead which where most people don't realize is where actually Jesus Christ was crucified, not in Jerusalem. So when we see the description in Revelation, and I think it's in Revelation chapter 11, describes this great city that where these people are going to be destroyed, well, it's actually talking about New York City, Golgotha. And then New York City just so happens to have the largest commercial cemetery on the face of the earth. It's the biggest and true city of the dead. And it just so happens to be at a place right off the coast of New York City called Heart Island. Could that just not be any more incredible? Which is connected to the place and the sacrifice that they're going to commit to raise this AC. It's all there. There's no stopping the spirit of truth. There's no stopping it. His breath kindleth coals. Flame, fire, smoke come out of his mouth. That's the exact same flame, smoke, and fire that's coming out of the locust's mouth in Revelation 9. Go check it out. The exact same thing. All of this is due to what? By his kneesings a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. That connects us right back to Kundalini, which is what the Leviathan description is as he's rising. By his kneesings, and then it's at verse 18, which is the 666, which is connected to the carbon, which is the dust of the earth in which this beast is supposed to rise from. By his kneesings. What is kneesings? Kneesings means sneezing, means breathing, and then a light doth shine. Well, amazingly, that's exactly how you achieve the Kundalini, through these breathing techniques and some of these techniques are super funky but that's the lesser reflection of what they want you to understand these breathing techniques are also about how they're raising the vibration talk about that another time but just absolutely understand by his kneesings by his breathing a light doth shine which is the illumination that's the process of the kundalini and we'll easily be able to prove it and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Well, he's supposed to be this bright and morning star also. And then this morning and the brightness of the flame of fire, just like we saw in Joel 2, like we saw in Hosea. His eyes, the illumination for the back of the dollar bill. It's everything that we talk about all joined perfectly, connected back to this breakings, which I'm going to show you is exactly as I described it, what they're going to do. We go to the Strong's Concordance for the exact rendering of what this breakings means in Job as we're looking at it. Chapter 41, verse 25. The number is going to be 7667. Wow, interesting. That's a double. That's a double. Give unto her double. That's what the second cup is. Is it not? Spirit don't let you down when you're in the truth. It even says a fracture. Incredible. Because uh, you're, if I have time, we'll see how that connects here. Ruin. A solution. A solution of a dream. Incredible. They have a dream. And that dream is of this new world. They believe that this destruction, this affliction is going to be this breaking this breaking is going to be the means to achieve it but fracture what did i tell you that they're trying to do they're trying to break the seal they're trying to fracture 
the seal. Broken, breaking, bruise, crashing. Crashing, is that not what a millstone would do? Would not a millstone crash down into the sea? Destructions hurt. And just as you saw, and remember, I'm already blown away. I realized all this before I came on camera. And I had to compose myself and not sound like I'm just running around here. Can't handle my own vision here. And that's not the case. I can. I have definitely had to come to terms that the Spirit is going to support me all the way through this. Just as the Spirit is going to support you all the way through this. Absolutely. A fracture. Vexation. And then interpretation. Everything. Everything's there. Interpretation. I mean, isn't that like how I told you that it was even double of perception of how you could perceive or interpret that previous scripture in Hosea about breakings? And then here it all is. All right. Well, you've seen that. You've seen that. I, I wonder how much longer many of you guys are just going to stay back in the, in the, uh, in the shadows, so to say, and not, and not come out and absolutely just recognize that I'm doing my best to convey the absolute truth of our father in heaven, his absolute perfection. And I'm not being let down. The spirit is supporting me. It's giving me everything in every possible way to do this. And it's just beautiful when you begin to understand it. Okay. Okay, I want to I want to show you something here. We have all of these amazing things. All of these amazing things. And there's I've already gone over all this in the type of detail that I'm going over what I'm talking about now and the information that's in all this is just you just couldn't imagine. So this is also about the rising of the locust too, because they are also illuminated. This is talking of how the illumination process is achieved on two levels, on their individual level, because they are, they're a great people. So they're individuals. They have risen and achieved this illumination by a process, but yet this process is connected more intimately to their DNA structure than it is to us, which means we really can achieve what they're achieving. And then this is why the elites trace the bloodline. One of the main reasons is that they are hoping to achieve as much as this genetic heritage so that they can accentuate more of the illumination while they're in the material here on the surface earth with us. Okay. So we'll come back and talk about this a little bit, but if you do your investigation here and, and view the Strongs, you'll see it says exactly what I says. It describes the sneezings as sneezings, which is in turn what we need to connect with this breath or this breath exercise. Remember that you got to think about the creation. You got to think about the irony. You got to think about the connections here. Remember that God creates man out of the dust of the earth. And I told you that's the fulfillment of the very potential that is encoded into the atom, the very dust of the earth that God has created and formed us all from. That's why it says in Genesis, let the earth bring forth the creature after its kind. Notice it says the earth. It's coming out of the earth. God's wisdom has designed the potential in the smallest of particles by the will of the creature identity consciousness of that lowest form of spirit as it urges itself and its want and its need to become more and more of that potential that has been promised to it even by God himself. And then as I said, the Adam eventuated, evolved and struggled and rose to the formation of the modern man. But yet the devil is going to seek to achieve his rising through the exact same technique through the atom, through the dust of the earth, the next thing that he needs to do is, in a sense, create this breathing, this breath, the very breath identity of a spirit to inhabit this material form, the very same thing that the Genesis account was all about. 
You see that? You see how he's working? You see how they're mirroring? You see how it's always going to be one is the true and then the other is the shadow trying to be the new, trying to be the new world order. All right? Okay. Now, remember the hook. And then if you haven't watched my Sandy Hook video and you want more confirmation that this is a technique that they're trying to use with DNA and Kundalini to rise the serpent through the crown chakra or the capital, which is what the symbolism is for the capital of Washington, D.C., go watch the video. All right. This is that drawn again. And if you want to see me not understand this drawing very well, go watch a video I did entitled 11, I'm a seer, 11, 11, 11, I'm a seer, come see what I see. And it should be on my playlist, but the title might be summed up, but just scroll through the playlist and please, please watch this video. This is, this is a prophetic drawing, but when I drew it, I wasn't trying to be a prophet. I was actually drawing for a child and like I said I've always been like this I've always known that I felt that I was born into these end times and I had studied as a child I'd read Behold a Pale Horse probably before I was 16 years old and I'm 40 years old now um, you know there's a lot of things, like I said, I revealed a little bit about my history. Um, I was in accelerated classes all throughout school. I was one of those gifted people, but I was the classic case where I quit school early because school didn't interest me. So it's just hard to describe, but I don't know. Anyway, I want to talk about the hook nose. You'll learn more about this drawing, but anyway, I did this some 10, 11 years before... Um, the Twin Towers came down in New York City. And I, I don't know, I was just drawing all sorts of things, but in my mind, I was drawing an end time scene. The child was so young that he didn't even really know what I was drawing. And in some cases, the child himself asked for things to be drawn, like the mushrooms, in which eventually I found out and understood the true meaning, what was symbolic of the illusion of which 9-11 truly was all about the illusion which also reflects the mirror, which encodes all the information that we're revealing. This is, look at this nose. Okay. Now, some of my older subscribers that originally watched this video series with me or, or watched me do this video series originally know that I didn't make any connections with this at first. Eventually, one of my own subs made a remark about the hook nose. This was possibly... A year before even this Batman mess started and here I've got over 20 years ago even 10 years before 9-11 the Batman symbol right beside the second cup and as I said Gotham City which is the symbolic city for Batman is also symbolism for New York City it's accepted in popular culture that Gotham is symbolized of New York City that's New York City that's the second cup I was thinking of cow jumping over the moon stuff here. And this symbolism with the moon, you're going to be blown away. But this is what's going to connect us to our witch and our wizard's hat. And also it connects us to what I had no idea of then. Sin, the Babylonian moon god. And this is them on the moon, which also symbolizes the destruction that they're going to bring to us. But it symbolizes them as this tree that we're going to see is the exact tree the exact growing root that is reached to this height, and the very height is the moon. This is representation of Ishtar, the woman with false Israel on the moon. And I told you that they are going to be destroyed by the very sword. Well, who is the sword? The sword is Isaiah chapter 34. The other sword, the reflection, the shadow sword, that's Isaiah 34. And my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Here's the sword on the moon that is in heaven. Okay, and they're going to kill with this sword, which brings this bomb to USA, which now is symbolism for releasing these UFOs, which will be connected to a UFO event. 
after the second cup takes place. We'll have to talk about that, but there's a two-part event that happens after the second cup, okay? They're going to try to spin some bad beings first, they're what they're going to make you think are bad, and then these locust-like beings are going to come in and supposedly take care of these bad beings. It's all symbolized in, in the drawing. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, are you noticing here that this moon has a hooked nose? And just view, view the video to see and check the date, 11, 11, 11. I'm a seer. Come see what I see. And you'll know that this was done way before Sandy Hook. And then Sandy Hook was done in a double. And then what did Sandy Hook do? It connected all back to Batman. I'm proven. I'm proven this video was uploaded possibly a year before that supposed Batman shooting came out. Before the Batman movie. All of it. And it's a part of my symbolism. What is this supposed to be? It's supposed to be the birthing time, right? I know it's kind of hard to see here right now. This is me down here on a boat floating on that water. And remember I tell you that you can say it two ways. We're the boat, Jesus is the captain. Or you can say that Jesus is the boat, we're the captain in perspective of our free will. Regardless of how you see it, this is me on the boat riding on the waters. And I even got my little skateboard ramp up here and stuff. And I'm projecting here like this light thing that made me think of the Batman symbol that I saw as a child in the Batman movies. That's how that came up in my mind. Well, it makes a pyramid. And then if you turn the pyramid upside down, this illumination is the light source at the top of the pyramid. And then the New World Order is all about the symbolism for the pyramid, which is what I found later, is to rise the Dark Prince, which is the perfect symbolism for the Batman. And then now I found out through doing all of this seeing, if you will, that this represents the birth womb. It represents the birth womb from the as above, so to below. And if you look at the Da Vinci Code where they try to spin you off and wrong, they talk all about this birth womb and show you that it's this inverted open triangle so to symbolize the womb of a female. And we know that this birthing is taking place through false Israel symbolized with the mother, which is now Ishtar through this occult science, is to birth this fallen prince. That you see why I'm like, I can't, I'm blown away why nobody will practically listen to me. And I'm proven. Check out this being once again with the hooked nose, which is proven way before Sandy Hook anything. Check out the moon with the hooked nose, now looking like it's wearing a witch's hat, a classic wizard. And if you, you're going to see that it's every, there's so, so much here to even talk about. It's telling you the bomb comes from the moon. And then this is their own, their own God their own sword that they're going to use is going to destroy them. This is almost depiction of them being plucked up by the roots that was described in Hosea because the roots of the tree are right there. And you can see that they're being kindled by the smoke of their very own God, which is burning their roots up. There's the worm coming out of the wormwood, which is what they're going to bring, which looks like some sort of nuclear bomb explosion now. Bitter as wormwood, that's don't drink the water. I found out that even the sin moon god is depicted usually as an old man wearing a four-horned headdress. And there's the four-horned headdress. I just... Uh, I'm pretty upset in a way, I guess. But I, I, maybe I'm not. I don't know. But... Uh, I mean, there's so much to talk about. Let me, yeah, yeah, this is it. This is what I want to show you. Okay. You have, keep, keep your socks on here. Notice the plane up here. Ten years before 9-11 happened, I drew some scene of two towers being symbolized as a mushroom with some evil villain symbolized even in a superhero suit which is, isn't that what this, these beings are supposed to be? Mighty men? Like supermen? And then think about Superman. His suit is both red and the blue. That's the blood for the sacrifice. That's the blue for the abysmal waters. 
That's the knowledge of the good and the evil coming together to create this, this new man. And then look at his feet. I could never figure out why until absolutely just recently. But I could not. I Even when I did this drawing, I was tempted to erase that. And I don't know why. But now I do. That represents his crooked step. It's the crooked serpent. It's the crooked path. You, you, he's walking the crooked path. And then look at the S on his cape. The symbolism here that would relate back to his power, from which you see even in the Bible, it describes the fallen prince's powers coming from a higher one than himself. I think that's in the book of Daniel. And then we know that would be Satan, the symbolic S of his cape, where he's receiving his superpowers from the Satan, and then it symbolizes him himself as the serpent, the Nahesh, Inki, this new man. Look at his claws. And then this person that's jumping off of the building, and then look at Jesus Christ right here. The armor of God reaching out, even at the 9-11 event, has already taken and saved them souls. When I first realized all this, you... I I had to find a way to contain myself without turning into some sort of religious fanatic, without turning into some. I've always had to. I've always had to find a way to balance myself, with my sheer amazement, of what somehow I produced, and then somehow to continually have to keep myself humble, and know that that's the right way, and just know that everybody has the power to receive the gifts and the fruits of the spirit. But it's always dependent upon the individual capacity of that person. Say, for instance, you're a vessel. And let's just make it analogous with a five-gallon bucket. A five-gallon bucket can only hold five gallons worth of water. So if you, all of your life, have taken into your being, your vessel, five gallons worth of tradition-bound, letter-bound, shadow, bad, bitter, wrathful, angry water that you've drinking, and now you're producing those as the fruits into the world, you cannot receive the higher reflections of truth from the Spirit. You can't receive the miracles of a loving God to actuate in your life because your vessel is already full of the very things that's an abomination to the Father. You must begin to release the traditional baggage, pour out the bad water and bring into you the living waters where you won't thirst again. And when you do, you can now begin to receive more and more because these waters are eternal. They overflow the container of the five of the vessel of which man is symbolic of this number five, the occult will try to tell you differently, but I'm telling you, there are many things that I could say right now. I just we'll just leave it at that. So ah I wrote on this plane, and you know this thing took place with the plane. I wrote uh for whatever reason, just as I couldn't figure it out why I even did this, and then I wrote what I thought I was tra- trying to write was assassin. And I, now, as you look at it, it reads as sin. And then this is what is amazing because I told you I had no idea that sin was depicted as a crescent moon as the Babylonian moon god with a four headed headdress. And then this connects in 100% to chapter 18 of Revelation that describes the fall of Babylon saying that its sins shall reach unto heaven. And then we know that this destruction has come from the heavens for the first cup being brought down with the plane from the sky. The second cup will be a higher reflection. It's going to be brought down from some sort of destruction from the moon. Because their very sin has now reached up to heavens. That's them. That's that tree. Israel is depicted as this tree. 
And there's even scripture that describes them as being twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And then I have got the roots down there. All right. Now, the, crook, the Kundalini serpent is also known as the crooked serpent. Everything is there to bring us up. It even describes the smoke ascending up from that great city. And on the top, there's a chimney with the smoke going down. I mean, the city by the sea, and then the city is hung precariously on a cliff that is now hanging over these waters. But I got, don't drink the waters, and we saw how that connected. It's just unreal. And then look, the little raise your vibration lizard here on the rock, and then the musical notes there. And you know that's that's death metal that he's listening to because he's trying to raise those from Orion, Iron, the death metal. I mean, oh boy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. So I started looking into the word as sin and I basically only saw it as um, that connection that it made to Revelation at the time. And you can see all this take place in my videos. I do. I talk about this drawing multiple times over the course of almost a year and a half now, I guess. And each time, my listeners will be completely aware that I had no idea about any of this stuff before, and I've just recently learned it. It's in the drawing. It's there. And I'm finding out in every way possible that it's there. Now we're talking about this with Ishtar and the Sacred Feminine, of which you'll know that I didn't talk about it like this then. Now I know the higher reflection of the understanding. Look what this as sin, which was spelled Nisa backwards. And remember, a subscriber, and I even think it was Lady Stonecut, who at the time said this, and she used to be a subscriber. I have nothing bad to say about her. She's the one that uh, showed me this connection here. And she said, and I looked it up, and then, could, and then now look at this. Nisa is a feminine name which has many meanings including goal what is their goal to rise the crooked serpent what is their goal what are they trying to do they're trying to create a new beginning a new world order what is this depicted as a sign. It this Nisa means all this from as sin. And then re, I'm, I just found this out tonight, as I said. Remember I've been talking about the goats as the asses? And then the second cup is how they're supposed to release I mean how I was talking about these ancient mighty men as these asses, the Don Keys. And that's what's to what they're trying to do with the knowledge to release the seal, to rise the chakra to bring the locust in, who are these Don Key asses themselves? It says as ass in. That's breaking the seal to bring the locust in. Ass in. They're trying to bring in the asses. I just this year that's new. Nobody's ever heard me say it like that. Beginning. It describes something here. It says friendly elf or fairy. And you gotta start thinking about spirit as it's connected to Ishtar but as we can see as this is connected to everything that we've seen so far this elf ain't too friendly it goes back to woman in Arabic Arabic and then describes end at the same time it describes the beginning as they're trying to symbolize an alpha and omega event which symbolized when the serpent originally fell that would be the alpha and now the second cup symbolizes the repercussion of that, which was to create their goal, which was the end, now justifies the means, which is their new beginning. And then look at this. We Nisa. I this came right off of Google. All of that in that same arrangement from typing in Nisa right here. They wrote it all like that. Not me. This is a year before the Batman movie came out. And then I've got this drawing like this. Look, Nisa also means. Nisa, Nisa a Rathka, Rathka, 
or Rath Ratko. I don't know. I don't know. I almost saw something there. A character in the Batman comic book series. This stuff goes right back. Right back. Right back. Now, I got more to show you. Like, okay. Uh, there's so much stuff to show you. As sin, that's Revelation 18.5. Sins have reached to heaven. And then as sin, the way I broke it down originally, moon god, chief Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, deity, crescent moon, his symbol. And then assassin, assassin, cyanize. That's incredible, man, because, or this is a crater actually on the moon. And an anagram came up for this. And as I said, they're on the moon. There's just no way on God's good earth that you can deny that I'm a seer. You can, you can listen to whoever you want to listen to. Being that I'm a seer does not mean that I'm a prophet. It does, it does mean that I've seen prophetic visions. But until these visions come true in the fullness, I'm just a seer. But when these visions do come through in the fullness, and they will... I'm sure that many might see me differently. I see myself as your brother. I see myself as your servant. I put myself to the side. I put everything to the side for you guys. I'm proven. The Spirit has supported me and will continue to support me. If you've got doubts about me, then you need to go through the video history. And you need to see that everything is exactly the way that I said it is. All of this stuff is supported, in some cases, a year and a half prior to the events that took place. And as I said, this drawing is from 20 years ago. And I just happened to find it one day after I had already started my channel through some books that I was about to throw out. And I had never looked at this drawing and known that it meant anything until about probably a year and a half ago. And the first thing that I noticed with the help of my dad, he was the very one that actually said that this looked like symbolism with Saddam, with the Iraq thing, and then it all fell into place. And from there, everything, everything is real. So for you guys that, for you guys that always want to come up against me and say, you know, you think I'm some whatever, whatever. Hey, man, I'm here for you guys just as well. I'm trying to help you see the truth. I'm trying to help you come to the true love of the Father and realize that you will get your perfection, but you get your perfection in eternity, and nobody achieves perfection with deception. Nobody. I'll be back.